Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Logic Bots. I hope you are enjoying the series so far. I know I sometimes don't or maybe more often don't make the perfect solutions. But that is what's cool about this game. There are actually many ways that lead to Rome in this case. But still, I'm really grateful for all the suggestions for improvement. There are things you can make me aware of that I just didn't know previously. Or that I didn't think of and I, I want to improve my logic thinking as much as possible. However, this time we're gonna use a little bit of a different strategy. I've been going at this game a little bit too much by just winging it. I want to do the more mathematical approach in quotes. It's not really mathematical in today's episode, but it, it goes into that direction. So first of all, let's get ourselves an overview of what we have to do with this level. That's right, we needed to actually drive our bot through a corridor. That basically means we want to detect both of the walls and at a certain distance we want to make sure the vehicle turns again in order to circumvent crashing into the wall. I'm going to start with our spider tech main body for one particular reason and that reason is this thing is actually rounded off here in the front and therefore I can put sensors in a more or less 45 degrees angle. That's exactly what I want instead of for instance having two sensors one pointing forward and one towards the side we can have one pointing diagonally and do both at the same time. Good 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 good. Uh, do I have a couple of lines here? Yeah I can actually activate all of these guys and that should allow me to build the vessel. We're gonna do that with the normal wheels right there. <laughs> now I actually also know where to place them. That confused me so much in the previous episode. But there we go. This is left motor normal anti-clockwise. Beautiful. We're also gonna add a caster ball right here in the front. The next thing I want to add is a couple of sensors. We now have these ultrasonic rangers which are, you know, less accurate and also with less range in case you don't need to measure something particularly specifically. But for this purpose I found the laser rangers to be more useful. So we're gonna add one right there and of course another one on the other side. So I already prepared all of the snap lines so you don't have to watch that. Yeah, in my opinion this will do the trick. However, in order to figure something out about the calculation we're gonna do later on, well, calculation, it's just a greater than and smaller than, but we do need to monitor the numbers we are outputting with the sensors. In the debugging section here we can choose the number monitor, I'm just gonna place one right there, we're gonna remove them in a second again. Or actually maybe we integrate them into our design, to be honest with you. Let's place them maybe here. Okay, I made sure we properly named those guys. We should do this with the lasers as well. This one is the right laser and the left laser. Cool, I think with that out of the way, we are actually ready to think about it a little bit. Maybe we go into the circuit board first of all and we bring this spider tech thing right here. I want to leave a little bit of space on the top. We're gonna add the left monitor maybe here and the right monitor right there. The left laser I'm gonna add here and the right laser here at the bottom. So maybe we can distribute the cables a little bit better. I'm not yet sure how many circuits we're gonna need, but I have a pretty good idea because I already thought about it. I just hope we don't fail. Anyways, for now let's just add a signal from the left laser to the left monitor and from the right laser to the right monitor. This way we should be able to start it up and actually see the distance it measures at the moment, which is 0.8 and that is a little bit suspicious. It could actually detect the floor here. Maybe the caster wheel isn't big enough for this test. I don't want to detect the floor, so we're gonna get rid of this bad boy and add the bigger caster wheel. Of course I do have a snap line for this one as well. We're gonna add that here and this time we should be able to see the real detection range, which is exactly one meter. So that is quite a convenient number, I have to say. Wow. Okay, that's, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this with the value of one meter. Let's go back to the circuit boards and maybe switch a few things around. I think I'm gonna need way more space. No, let's think about it first. Don't wing it, Nathan. <laughs> okay, let's uh, pop up our little notepad here. Just like back in the days in school, we're now gonna write a couple of sentences that will allow us to plan out our design much better. Alright, I put the bot in the background so you can imagine a little bit better what I mean with this part. 
So, let's say the left sensor detects something, then we want it to be output to the monitors. Uh, so, left sensor outputs to left monitor. We can basically copy this down further down the line, the right sensor outputs to right monitor. That's what we already established, that's easy. Now let's think about what the bot should do when it approaches a wall. So if the left sensor detects a number that is smaller than 1, the number we've established, then theoretically or practically the left wheel should activate in order to get away from this wall again. So if the left sensor detects a number smaller than 1, the left motor activates. That's what we want and we can copy this down for the right motor as well because we basically have to mirror the design the right sensor detects a number smaller than 1, then the right motor activates. Now, we need a third condition actually in order to make this work. What if both the sensors detect a number higher than 1? This basically means we are good to go and we want both of the motors to be turned on. So let's put that into a sentence as well. Uh, when both the left sensor and the right sensor, so that will require an AND gate, the right sensor detect a number greater than 1, the left motor and the... Oh, I actually use the same abbreviations for uh, motor and monitor. So maybe we call this L monitor and this one our monitor, just to not be confused. However, if both left sensor and right sensor detect a number greater than 1, the left motor and the right motor will activate. Now, this is not an AND gate, you know, we just have a signal here and we basically want to split it. So this AND means a splitter. Cool, now we can think about what we need to fulfill all of these. Uh, for instance, right here, we have uh, we start with one left sensor signal, we need one for the monitor, then we need one for the comparison here, and we need a third signal for this one here. Huh, okay, so we are gonna need at least two splitters just to fulfill that order. We also need a smaller than comparison and we need a static value of one. Same thing right here, we can just actually copy this down. We need the exact same thing for the right sensor, but here we are also going to need a splitter, I already mentioned it here, and we're gonna need greater than gates, right? And of course we need to compare both values, so we're gonna need two greater than gates, and we're also gonna need a static value, right, of one. Okay, so we're gonna need three static values, all one. We might want to add some splitters for those guys as well, but this is more or less enough in order to get ourselves started at least. Now I'm gonna try to keep this up in the corner, I think there it doesn't bother you as much, but having this will make it so much easier to think through it. So first of all, we know that we are going to need two splitters, only for the left and right sensor, so we're gonna add those guys right there. Let's do the easy condition right here first of all. The left sensor or the left laser outputs a signal directly into the left monitor right there. So we have this finished already. We can do the same thing with the right laser and the right monitor. Great, okay, let's get this out of the way. We can remove this line and this line so we can focus on the other lines. The left sensor detects a number smaller than one, then the left motor activates, okay. The left motor can also be activated through this method here. That means we're gonna need an OR gate at least for the left motor and another one for the right motor. Let's add those. OR gates, uh, we add those right there because I believe that's the end of the line. So we can add the left and the right motor. The left sensor detects a number smaller than, we're gonna need less than, where are we gonna add those here maybe? Okay, I'm gonna need two more signals for the left laser. One is gonna go into this comparison and another one into the other comparison. So what I have to do is bring this over here, bring this into this comparison. And we also need a greater than. And we also actually need static values. So maybe we add those first since they are gonna get in the way otherwise. They are already in the way a little bit, but that's fine. We're gonna need greater than right there and there. 
But let's finish the marked sentences. Uh, smaller than one. Uh, we're gonna need to add the values right there. One, one. Let's do it at the bottom two. Or should we go with another splitter? Because theoretically we could do this with splitters. I just believe it's gonna be a little bit cleaner doing it with two of these static value generators. Okay, if this number is smaller than one, then we want to activate the left motor. There we go. So we go away from the wall again. We got this sentence out of the way. Let's do the same thing for the other side. We just have to hook things up properly here. So the right laser, we need to split that again. One is gonna go... Oh, we are missing a gate. Uh, less than right there. Okay, if this number is less than one, then we want to go into this OR gate. We actually took care of this sentence already. Oh, that's great. It's a great method doing it this way. It's so much less confusing. I mean, it's gonna get more complex every time because winging it actually didn't work for me for this puzzle. I tried it off camera a little bit. Anyways, uh, maybe we are gonna test the design right now. I wonder what it does. Yeah, right now the numbers are just above one. I need to be sure that we are not doing something wrong. So I'm just gonna set this to 12. I, I meant to set it to two, but 12 is also gonna serve the Yeah, okay, okay, we are on the right track. Ooh, I was already worried there a little bit, but this needs to be one again. Okay, we can do the last sentence here. If both the left sensor and the right sensor detect the number greater than one, the left motor and the right motor activate. So we're gonna need another splitter somewhere along these lines and an AND gate. Yeah, the splitter goes here, obviously, because it activates both the left and the right motor. We can hook this already up. Oh, I should have color-coded the stuff for you guys, you know? One color for each sentence. Uh, we also need an AND gate. We can clearly see that in the sentence. So both when both of these conditions here are true, then we want to activate this bad boy. Okay, and then last but not least, we need to do the comparison, of course. So left motor and right motor compared to one and one. Okay, that must work. I failed many times off camera, so this is not my first solution. <laughs> but I don't want you to stick around for too many episodes where I, I'm just failing miserably. So let's test this. I'm pretty sure it's going to work. Oh, it's a little bit wobbly. You know, the one meter is actually a little bit harsh. Oh, wow, this is actually extraordinarily good. I didn't expect that to happen. Oh, man, what is it doing with the corner? Ah, uh, okay, I didn't think about the corner. <laughs> Another fail. Ah, I mean, I came this far. I, I made it to the corner with previous designs as well. Oh, please, please, please. Maybe it just needs a little bit of replacement for the sensors. Come on, come on. What's going on? At this point, the sensor should detect a range greater than, you know, greater than, but this one not. So that means... Hmm. What does it mean? <laughs> Up to this point, it looks extremely good. And then right here, can I pause? Oh yeah, I can pause. So right now, the left monitor shows 3.5 meters. So that's clearly above one. And this one is also above one. Oh... Ah, and at this point they are already both below 1. I see. So what if we changed the value a little bit to maybe 0.9 or so? But oh well, it cannot work uh, from the start. We just need to fiddle around a little bit. So now it has less capability to fail. I do believe so at least. Let's try to switch this to 1.1. This is the greater than comparison. So if it's smaller than 0.9 and bigger than 1.1, maybe that changes stuff. I can't believe that this didn't work. Oh no, this doesn't work at all because we are exactly in between those values. We have to have the same values. Jeez. Okay, we're gonna attempt it with the number one once again, but this time we're gonna try to move the sensors extremely slightly, just a little bit more to this side. Same thing with this guy, come on, just a little bit more over there. We're so close. Come on, guy, you can do this. I believe in you. Okay, right now I'm actually glad I left the, the number monitors on there so we can do this debugging. 
Okay, up to this point, it absolutely makes sense. Right now, the robot should have the tendency to go towards this corner, but then it detects this wall and therefore should swap around. I think I moved the monitors into the wrong direction if I want to make this better. Yeah, it's not turning. <laughs> oh man, I wish I was an engineer and understood this a little bit better. We're gonna push them towards the side. There we go. This is more or less symmetrical, enough for testing purposes. Okay, okay, this might actually already work out better. Oh, well, at least we're making it around these corners. All right, all right, yeah, I can see this work. Oh, please, turn around, turn. Oh, oh, oh! Come on, I want this to work. Yes, oh, 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 what, what? Did you see that? Did speeding up the simulation actually help me out there? Wow, we reached the time and also the budget. I need to see this again. I don't believe this actually worked out. We're gonna speed things up all the way to this point and let's analyze this. Okay, now it made the right turn in the right moment, but this is a little bit of a matter of luck. Okay, but it definitely helped to replace the sensors a little bit. Ah, oh, this is great. We got it working, guys. I'm so glad. You have no idea how long this took me. Oh, amazing. Let's have a look at the next level. Oh, no, I didn't mean to do that. Well, let's do it again. Whee! Turn around. Okay, it's not a matter of luck anymore, it seems. I made it through three times in a row. So that is good enough for me. My head hurts a little bit, I have to admit. Hmm. Next up, we have the wide corridor. Maybe we actually built something that can already do this. We got the auto save. Of course, we're gonna use that. We should have all of our circuits. Yes. Good, 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 good. Um, let's actually check out the track before we just... Oh. Oh, no. <gasps> oh, this is amazing, guys. I love it. Yeah. Ah, oh, no. We're never gonna make it through. But we're gonna test it nonetheless. Start. Let's see what it does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so far, not so bad. Oh, no. It cannot deal with the wall. Oh, oh. Turn, turn. Yeah, turn. It does the right thing but with the wrong intentions. Yeah, we definitely need another setup for this. Why, wow, this is crazy. Let's do this again. I don't think it's gonna act... Wow, it acted the exact same way. Okay, that's fairly interesting. I don't really know how to deal with this situation. So I think I'm gonna leave it at that, and maybe you guys have suggestions on how to solve this next puzzle. But with that out of the way, thank you so much for watching. I'm so sorry that I totally forgot to take away this window again, but <laughs> alas, I hope it didn't bother you too much. With that out of the way, have a great time, and hopefully I'm going to catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>